Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State Attack, and today I wanted to talk about something a little bit different for this channel, but it's really in line with where I've been at with technology over the last couple of months and some things that I've been playing around with, which is solar energy. Now, we've been traveling full time for the last two months as a family in our RV. Uh, I've got a link to our Instagram so you can see kind of what that's looked like. Uh, we've been staying at a variety of places. Um, some of them have hookups, full hookups for electricity and water and sewage and all that stuff but a lot of places we've been staying don't have anything at all. We've been utilizing a website called Boondockers Welcome and then also staying at some places that just don't have any hookups. And so we need to be able to generate our own electricity. We need to be within at least reasonable close proximity to water. And then of course, if we stay for somewhere for any long period of time, we need to be able to dump those tanks somewhere as well. But electricity primarily being the main issue because I have my laptop, I have my cameras, um, my kids have their Amazon Kindles, my wife has a couple pieces of technology, and we just need to be able to keep those things running and charged at all times. We also have a trailer that has LED lighting on the inside so it's a little bit more um, you know, power efficient. But I also have electric jacks on the trailer. Uh, the tongue jack is electric. And so there are a lot of things that are utilizing electricity on the trailer. And if all we had was just the standard single 12 volt deep cycle battery that came on the trailer, we would have been out of luck and out of power very quickly. So I installed a Renogy solar kit on the trailer and I actually made some changes to that. So I'm going to link to things down in the description below so you can kind of see the full setup that I have. I originally was going to go with a simple 200 watt system with a 20 amp charge controller, but I realized quickly that if I installed that and then made changes that I already decided I was going to make, that that wouldn't be enough to really grow with me. So I quickly changed over to a 40 amp charge controller and added two more panels to the top of our trailer, giving it a total of 400 watts of power. Now, here's one important thing to consider when you're doing solar, when you're putting solar on anything. Just because a panel is rated at something like 100 or 120 watts doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a full 120 watts out of that, uh, out of each panel. So right now our trailer is sitting right over here in the sun. I actually like where the trailer's positioned because like the trailer is, is reflecting light on me and I think it actually like looks pretty good. It's a good lighting situation from a, a photographer perspective. Um, but I've got four panels of solar on top of the trailer, direct sunlight hitting the trailer unobstructed from over the top. So it's an optimal situation right now for charging. However, with those four panels up there, I get an average of about 280 to 320 watts, um, depending on how, you know, cloud coverage or if there's any haze or anything like that up there. We're also kind of in a area where we're not getting any direct sun exposure until about 11 o'clock in the morning. And then we're losing most of our sun exposure by about three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Now, by having watched a lot of videos and kind of educating myself prior to doing this whole solar install on my own and doing this all on my own, I learned that I want to have more wattage than I really need because in those instances where we have lots of cloud coverage, maybe it's even raining out or something like that, I know that my 400 watts of solar panels are only going to produce maybe like around 40 or 50 watts of solar power and I want to be able to charge uh, the battery off of that over the course of a day so that way we still have enough electricity to use during the evening and during the night. Now, there's six of us in this trailer. It's a 28-foot Forest River Cruise Light. And uh, with that, we have things, we have a, a seven-month-old. We have to make sure that we can warm up bottles, um, which, you know, we typically do uh, either in the microwave if we're connected to electricity, or we do with gas burning, uh, with our gas burning range uh, otherwise. Um, but we also utilize like a little noise machine just because my wife and I don't necessarily go to bed as early as our kids. And so we might be talking in our room or, you know, reading or, or listening to a show or something like that that we're watching. And we want to be able to kind of block out the noise. So we'll run a little sound machine. Um, we keep a little light on in the bathroom. You know, there's just stuff like that that's going to utilize electricity all night long. And I wanted to make sure that we were going to be able to use those things and not have our batteries go down dead midnight in the middle of the night 
And then even though it's summertime where we're staying right now, we've actually had to utilize our heater the last couple of nights and being able to make sure that we have enough power to run the heater throughout the night because the fan is going to require electricity even though the heater to get the heat burns propane we need that electricity to get us through the evening and so with the 400 watts of solar on top of the trailer and the the lithium battery from battleborn we've definitely had a much better experience than we had in our earlier trips that we took uh, when we were just connected with our standard deep cycle battery and not even having any solar at all Early on, when we would travel, we would have to be very careful because the lead acid batteries or the deep cycle style batteries cannot go below 50% of their capacity, of their charge capacity. So when you run that battery down to 50%, anytime you go below 50%, that battery is, you're doing damage to your battery. With a lithium battery, you can really go all the way down to 5% uh, and not cause any damage of that battery. And many of the lithium batteries have smart technology on them that actually protect you from doing damage to the battery. For example, if you do draw a battery all the way down to 0%. We did have one instance in an evening where, uh, you know, I might have gotten a little overzealous with how much power we had in the trailer, you know. Uh, we were charging cell phones at night. We had the sound machine on. Um, I had my laptop uploading some videos for YouTube, which meant I had it plugged into a power inverter that was then running off of the battery in the trailer. Uh, and I had done this the night prior. Obviously, I don't think it was using too much power because I woke up the next day and the battery still had 86% of its life left in it. And I thought, wow, this is great. We're able to just, you know, do the, you know, just let the things run at night, um, you know, use a little bit of electricity. We're being responsible. We're not leaving a bunch of lights on. We're not, you know, uh, using every 12 volt port on the trailer. Um, but I woke up the next morning with 86% and felt pretty good. But then, of course, the next night, I'm uploading three videos at the same time, which I knew was going to take all night, uh, being on our internet that we have here. And the power that it was drawing from the power inverter, which is a 300 watt power inverter, and I know the laptop draws about, um, you know, it can draw about 60 to 70 watts um, when it's charging. And then I had an AC USB adapter plugged in charging two phones and a tablet at the same time. So it was probably pulling a total of around 150 watts continuously throughout the entire night. And then when we ran the heater a little bit and we, I think that night ran the actual vent on our uh, stove instead of the noise machine, that was just a little too much electricity. And at about seven in the morning, the battery cut out completely on the trailer, um, which if we had if we had had another hour uh, or if maybe we were in another time zone and the sun was up a little bit earlier, um, we would have had uh, uh, the solar kick on or I guess maybe even if we didn't have the tree coverage here. Um, and I, I know that sounded weird saying like in another time zone, but when we were up in Montana, in northern Montana, we, the sun was up at like 6 in the morning and the sun didn't go down until like 1030 at night. It was really odd, uh, something we weren't used to. Um, but we did run out of battery and that was really kind of a bummer and it kind of freaked me out because those Battleborn batteries are expensive. And I knew that the Renogy system would get it topped off relatively soon because the day prior when it got down to 86%, it took like 15 to 20 minutes for it to get back up to 100%. And I know right now that even though I have my laptop connected to a power inverter that's drawing straight off the battery and the trailer um, with the solar running and getting full sun exposure, I have 100% battery right now. But I was worried about the battery, so I reached out to Battleborn and talked to them, and they reassured me that there's built-in technologies in the battery that protects it from those types of issues. Um, obviously, a battery that's going to cost that much money, um, yes, it's good lithium technology, and the battery itself is really good, but there are some smart functionalities built into the battery to protect those accidental instances where you end up drawing the battery to what it will say is zero because the battery will be outputting zero uh, of, it, of its power, zero volts, nothing at all, um, but the actual protections that are built into the battery are there to save your battery from reaching those critically low levels. Because with lithium batteries, lithium batteries actually can 
deplete enough to the point where they can't accept a charge. And I've run into this with lithium batteries, uh, LiPo batteries with my RC cars. If you let the batteries, if you don't put them into a storage mode and they die out, completely, it's going to be really hard for you to bring them back to life without doing something that they probably don't recommend, um, but uh, the, it causes damage to the batteries. So in talking about the Renogy kit, the Renogy kit was really, really simple to install. Uh, the most challenging thing was just finding where I was going to run the wiring down into the trailer. And I did decide to actually relocate my battery off the tongue of the trailer and inside the trailer because I was switching to lithium. And in switching to lithium, you can mount those batteries inside your trailer. Whereas with the lead acid batteries, they actually breathe a little bit and let off a little bit of gases. Very little, but you don't want that inside the body of your trailer. You want that either in a compartment that is separated from your trailer or on most trailers, they put them on the tongue of the trailer. So with that said, I moved the battery to the inside of the trailer, which meant changing some wiring. I made some adjustments to uh, just the way that the wires were and also with the um, the breakers that were on the trailer were really chintzy. And so I upgraded those by just getting rid of those and putting better breakers. But the Renogy system has done a really great job in uh, taking care of keeping my batteries topped off, making sure that when we do drain them really low, that they charge up really well and really fast. When I ran the battery down to that 0% the other day, um, the battery was charged to 100% in a very small amount of time, which was great. And of course, everything has been operating really well since then. And I've had zero side effects from having ran the trailer down to 0%, um, which like I said, I was worried about because that's not a cheap battery. So with the Renogy system that's in there, I also have the Bluetooth module so I can connect to my smartphone and I can see what's going on with, uh, with, with the trailer, how much um, the solar is producing. That's how I know the wattage. I don't necessarily have to have gauges or anything like that. I could just simply um, look at the Bluetooth app and see the wattage that it's producing right now. And the Bluetooth range is actually really good on, uh, on the, um, the little adapter that you plug in. Um, now I am actually running the load for my trailer. So the, the cable that actually powers the trailer is coming straight off the battery. Um, I don't recommend, I've read that it's not recommended and nobody at all has ever recommended to me that you run it off of the actual charge controller itself. The data math person in me wishes that I could because then the Bluetooth app would be showing me constant load and constant draw and all that stuff. And the data over time, the analytics data that it gives you would be much more you know, interesting to look at, but it's just not recommended to, to run that much of a draw. So, I mean, if we're running chargers and inverters and all that stuff, you just can't get a big enough piece of cable up into that charge controller um, to be able to give you the amount of power that you need. Um, and, and so I just didn't do it. I went with the recommended, even though I'm not getting the data that I want. So with the Renogy setup that I'm running, you know, and I did a lot of homework, reading, watching other videos. There's a couple of other people on YouTube that are doing a lot of solar related stuff that's just been super helpful to me. Um, doing a lot of research, I found that this Renogy setup was gonna be probably the best bang for my buck. And I did want a system that all came from the same place. Uh, I have tried to reach out to Renogy a couple of times for technical support, and it is a little challenging at times to get in touch with them, but I ended up figuring out everything that I needed to know on my own anyways, and not having to deal with Renogy. And actually calling Battleborn, I called Battleborn one time and asked them a couple of questions that weren't even battery specific. They were more charge specific. So I guess it really did have to do with the battery. It just didn't have to do with the Battleborn battery itself. And they were super knowledgeable and had a lot of information uh, to kind of help me out with. Um, I ended up also updating the, uh, the regular charge converter that goes in the trailer. I know if, if you're new to solar, you've got a charge converter that actually converts the solar power into uh, what can charge your battery on your, um, uh, you know, your trailer. And then you have your charge converter, which is actually gonna convert the power for shore power. So when you take your plug and plug it in to your trailer to electricity, it's gonna convert and charge using that device. I upgraded that as well because the cheap one that came with the trailer 
I was afraid wouldn't be able to handle or really charge at the level that the Battleborn batteries needed to be charged. The Battleborn batteries, not only just Battleborn, but lithium batteries in general, run a little bit higher in voltage. So instead of being like in the 12 volt range, you're actually in the low 14 volt range typically with a lithium battery. And I wanted to make sure that I had a better quality charge converter for that so that I could actually get uh, better, better lifespan out of my battery. Um, so with that said, the, like the Renogy setup has been really good, uh, despite the fact that I was able to find like, I wasn't able to find like the best information online. I wasn't really able to get the best help online. It was super easy to get it set up, uh, to get those panels mounted, and I left room so that I can maybe put a couple more panels up there. I definitely plan on adding uh, at least two more Battleborn lithium batteries. I think that with two more batteries, that's going to give us enough room to really just not even have to pay too much attention to how much electricity we're consuming throughout the evening and throughout the night uh, with the trailer because unless you are really, really just running everything at full throttle all night, you wouldn't run out of power. Um, thankfully, you know, we've been in areas with relatively good weather. We haven't needed the air conditioner really at all. Uh, we haven't really needed the heater much at all either. And even though we've been boondocking a lot, uh, our solar and the one Battleborn battery has almost been enough uh, unless we stretch it a little thin, like I talked about earlier in this video. So with that said, I mean, let me know what you think about this, uh, this setup, this video. I've been showing you some B-roll, kind of talking about stuff, giving you a little bit of information about our setup. Um, I definitely invite you to ask any questions that you have down in the comment section. And if something like this is interesting to you, let me know, because I'll try and produce some more content on the whole solar, on the whole, um, you know, kind of being off the grid setup. And then I may even do a little bit more of that over on our travel channel. So I just look forward to communicating with all of you down in the comment section and just hearing what you have to say. So with that said, thanks so much again for checking out the video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope to see you back here soon in the next one. Take care.